Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Gia Faith, and in today's video, we are making a blueberry lemon sourdough loaf. I'm excited about this recipe because I'm kind of doing some experimenting with my measurements and just really trying to find a recipe that I can call my own for my base sourdough. And what I end up using is not enough starter. I feel like I should have used a little bit more starter, and you'll see I barely use like 150 grams once we get to that point. I think part of my thought process was the fact that I had such an active starter and I was going to be using a good amount of flour that once everything is actually combined or whatnot, the starter would feed off the flour in the dough. I don't know if that's how it works or anything, but that was my thought process. So even though I didn't use as much starter as I normally do, my thought process was I'm feeding it anyway once I add the flour to it. because. I don't know if you can tell, but I even took it off the scale, so I really am winging it for this recipe. With that, I do know that I want the consistency to be somewhat of a shaggy type dough once I'm doing it. So you can see I add flour until I get the consistency of the dough that I'm actually looking for. And I'm not even going to tell you a story. I don't know how much flour I added. I want to say probably at least two to three cups, probably more than that. One thing to note, and I've said this before in my other videos, I use a very well hydrated starter. I My starter is usually a little over 100% hydrated. That means I'm doing one for one or I'm probably doing more than one when it comes to like flour to water ratio when I'm feeding my starter. I like a hydrated starter. I like my bread to be a little more moist. I enjoy it. I haven't, well, I actually have tried lesser hydrations. There's nothing wrong with them, but I just like the more moist type artisan loaf. And then like when I toast it, I love the crits that I get from it. So now that we're at a consistency, I think it's good. It's time for me to just let it sit. And then while I let it sit, I just cover it with like a cheesecloth or a tea towel or something. And I put it in a cool corner and I'm going to let it sit for 30 minutes. After that, that's where I'm going to come back and add, start adding my add-ins. So like I said, this is a blueberry lemon loaf and I've already added one set of, of my lemon zest and I'm gonna add some more and I'm gonna do my stretch and folds. And normally when I do my add-ins, like I've made a blueberry lemon loaf before, I do it all at the end, but the lemon flavor wasn't as strong when I did that. So I thought that if I would add the lemon zest in through each stretch and fold, it will have time to like actually sit and then those lemon oils would go in throughout the bread and it would give it like a nice lemon taste throughout the entire time. So this go around, I'm just adding some uh, lemon zest and I'm gonna do my stretch and folds and then we'll be back.
now that I've done that, I'm going to add my blueberries in and I'm just using frozen blueberries. Now, one thing I do wish I would have done is dusted them with flour to avoid like the juice leaking and everything, but it's okay. So I'm gonna add my blueberries. And again, I'm adding them in the stretch and fold process instead of the end. And I probably could have waited to the end to add these because you'll see it ends up kind of getting messy and it doesn't quite work out the way I thought it was gonna work out. But I'm gonna go ahead and add those and try to incorporate them for the stretch and folds. I think one issue is the fact that I was so concerned with actually having all the blueberries worked in. And I've seen other people make blueberry loaves and sometimes they're coming out and they're not fully incorporated. I really wanted them to be like in the center of this dough. I didn't want to see any of them on top. So you can see as I'm like going through or whatnot that I'm trying to like really incorporate them in. All right, so this is my final stretch and fold and I'm adding the rest of that lemon zest and then I'm gonna add a few more blueberries. Now I added so many blueberries too because when I made my last blueberry loaf, it was like they were kind of, no, it's not that they were hit or miss. They all settled towards the bottom. And when I added them, I added them in like a layer and then I folded them over, folded one third, added more. And then I folded another third, added more. And it still did not incorporate throughout the loaf like I wanted to, so again, the thought process and the intent for to have the blueberries and lemon zest all throughout so you have a nice strong blueberry lemon flavor throughout the loaf. So after this process, we are going to let it sit and do its bulk fermentation. And look at me, I'm telling you, I'm absolutely obsessed with getting these blueberries inside hey. the loaf. I'm telling you, it's the little things where I'm like, I'm a little bit OCD. But yeah, now we're gonna let it sit. So here we are at the end of bulk fermentation. And if I'm being honest with you, I don't see any rise. It looks a little liquidy, it's kind of shaky. So I'm not too sure how well my project's going right now. I will say in all the sourdough that I've made, there's none that have been absolutely horrible. There's my disclaimer. Even if it doesn't rise the way it's supposed to rise or it's maybe a little gummy or didn't let it cool, whatever the case may be, or whatever issue that you're having with your sourdough, I will say that so far, none of them have like just been absolutely inedible or whatnot. Not sure why I just pinched that off, but we're getting ready to do the whole shaping process and then go from there. Now, if you watch when I pour it out and you can see that it kind of just spreads everywhere. That's not what we're looking for when we're getting ready to shape our sourdough. You want it to kind of hold its shape or whatnot. 
And honestly, I think part of it is after like having some more experience and everything is that my dough overproofed during bulk fermentation and that's why it lost its electricity. Side note, something that I actually did recently try because I was worried about it overproofing overnight while I was sleeping. I put it in the fridge so it did like a cold bulk proofing and it still rose and everything. It did a little bit slower and that sourdough came out good. I did a whole lot of things so go watch my last video about that because you'll see. So for this one, I'm just shaping it in the shape of a loaf and it's actually forming really well so I'm kind of surprised about that. And my blueberries aren't too bad so I'm just going to continue to shape it. I think I'm going to do some tuck and folds and then put it inside the bed. Kind of holding its shape it's kind of loose and everything and guys i apologize in advance i lost footage of me actually baking it oh, yeah. because i remember i was traveling home the same day that i did all of this and i baked it and it I rose believe. in the middle but the ends were kind of flat so it was like a, like, um, a dome loaf and you see it's kind of sticky still and my husband has already eaten the loaf he did say that it was good he didn't have any issues with it but this is me putting it inside the Benetton and I'm gonna put some ram wrap over it and everything and let it sit in the fridge. But I will tell you, it was overproofed and when I baked it, it rolls in the middle, didn't rise on the ends oh my gosh. and I lost the footage. I if you want me to revisit a blueberry lemon sourdough loaf again though, let me know and I will. I think maybe the third time will be a charm so maybe you will do it. We'll just have to see and how it now And once you're done watching this video, check out my them. last weekly reset to see <laughs> my new technique for stretching and folding as well as how good those loaves came out. Like I'm really proud of myself, even with the cold fermentation and everything. Go check those out. Oh.